Welcome back, everyone. Toysh is here, and I am back yet again to give you guys another fresh look. And today, we are totally checking out the second wave of the Super 7 TMNT Ultimates figures. Uh, it, it's never been a greater time to be a Ninja Turtles fan, unless it's the uh, late 80s into the 90s, right? Every single company is making Ninja Turtles, it seems like. And for the most part, everybody is killing it. So, like I've said previous videos, I'm a huge fan of what NECA Toys is doing with their cartoon turtles because those were the designs that I wanted as a kid, even though I collected the heck out of the Playmates ones, which again, this is what Super 7 aims to bring back. The nostalgia is there. It's all articulated figures, really painted to the nines. I mean, they did a fantastic job with these. Wave 1, I thoroughly enjoyed, and with Wave 2, well, got some thoughts and ideas, right? Of course, that's why you're here. So, in either case, sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of mutagen. This is a look at Super 7's TMNT Ultimates, Wave 2. And right before we get to looking at these figures, I gotta do the whole uh, affiliate announcements thing. So, if you haven't already, if you've never checked them out, I do highly recommend Entertainment Earth. I do use them myself, but if you're interested in maybe toys you may have missed, or pre-orders, things of that nature, Ninja Turtles, Funko, Mortal Kombat 11, you know, you got Spawn and Nightwolf and Ren and Stimpy. Hey, they're making a comeback, Super 7's uh, Ultimates. Uh, but uh, you go ahead and you go up to that little search bar, right? And uh, I know they do this every time, but yeah, it helps people out, I guess. Super 7, TMNT Ultimates. Type that right into the search bar, and you can see all the figures that uh, I've been talking about with Super 7 and all their Ninja Turtle action. Heck, even some of the figures may be on uh, a clearance, right? Outlet deal here and there. Glow in the Dark, Mutage Man, Splinter. And be sure to use the code SPRINGFREE2022. I'll put that right here. You get free shipping within the United States uh, for a lot of different things. It might depend on what you're ordering, just FYI. But uh, for the most part, yeah, it seems to work with everything. Heck, maybe uh, order some of the newer Super 7 TMNT figures that are coming out. Or hey, as I always say, if you're more of a uh, NECA Turtles fan, they got the new Fugitoid up in case you missed him at Target. And yeah, you can go and check all those out. They got the Monster Turtles, the Archie Turtles. They got yeah, everybody's doing crazy amounts of turtles. So like I always say, and thank you very much for putting up with my affiliate mumbo jumbo, please check out Entertainment Earth. I guarantee you'll find something there that you like. So let's get on with the show, right? So we got Mutagen Man, and I'm just going to tell you right now, I have talked about every single friggin' Mutagen Man that has come out in just the recent months, years, whatever. But uh, yes, the Super 7 Ultimates Mutagen Man is a fantastic figure. Uh, there's even a glow-in-the-dark version. I have all these videos up. I think I've talked about him to death. But really quick, in the in, you know, just to kind of go with this video, he's a great, monstrous figure. They have beautifully recreated the Playmates Toys version. You can even pop this little wire thing off. And no, I don't recommend filling them with goo or water or anything else. It doesn't really have like a enclosure to keep it all in there. But you get what I'm saying. It's pretty cool. He's got his little blaster. He's got horribly scarred chunks of flesh and <laughs> everything else. But dang it all, it is really well done. And he's got articulation more so than all the Playmates ever did, right? And that's the whole point of all these uh, Ultimates figures. This was my first Super 7 Ultimate figure, so I definitely do recommend him. He'll fit in with any number of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures that you may have. But to really kick things off, right? A new figure to look at, the Shredder. Now you enter the Shredder. And this guy, well, he brings back... All the nostalgia, right? We'll get into that in just a second. He's got a really nice katana. It's painted very nicely. Nice silver blade to it. You get a couple of ninja throwing stars, right? Those are nice and silver. And you got some extra hands. A lot of extra hands with these figures. It works and yeah, it kind of goes back and forth. And then you got the uh, Shredder head portrait. He's doing the whole uh, flying nun thing, right? But uh, very well done, very well painted. I wish there was a little bit more detail in the eyes. I think that that's where it kind of loses the whole thing with that. But uh, yeah, you get some uh, extra Ninja Turtle parts and pieces we have seen before, very well painted. And you do get this elastic Velcro belt if you wanted to go ahead and kind of tuck the cape in, just like the old Playmates figure you can do that. So it definitely works with you if you want to use the cloth goods cape, which hey, there are two capes, right? So you get a plastic cape 
and you get the cloth goods one. This one is nice. It's got great paint to it. I think I prefer the cloth goods one, but we'll pop this one on there just to see how it looks. You do get the ridiculous weapons tree. I've already said my piece on this. I think out of everything to kind of askew, you could probably uh, get rid of these. But uh, the Shredder himself, remember this guy? This was such a stressful figure to me as a kid, right? First of all, he was shirtless. It wasn't like the show. Then he was pre-posed, right? So you couldn't really do much. But Super 7, <laughs> they fixed all that, right? They gave him some articulation and they kept the unibrow thing. So that's awesome. Ninja Brows by Saki. Five minutes to fabulous. That's right. Brows to help you conquer the world and those accursed turtles. But uh, yeah, I like that they gave you two different head portraits and kept the uh, ridiculous unibrow one. But the, you know, the regular version's cool too. You got the nice cloth good cape with the bendy wire inside. If you've seen my recent Hobgoblin video for Spider-Man the Animated Series, I'm really into cloth goods cape. I think they look fantastic. I've, I don't know, I've just changed my whole opinion on that. Now, don't get me wrong, plastic is good, but for all the abs on this guy, he's got no ab crunch. He has the standard articulation that you're probably used to. Single jointed elbows, single jointed knees, go really easy on the knees on this guy and the joints around the groin, right? Just be very easy, that's all I'm gonna say. The uh, blades are very rubber, the feet, everything's there. You can articulate the heck out of this guy and have a blast, especially for when, yeah, you wanna put the plastic cape on, you get him holding the sword, that looks awesome. That is very cool, this brings me so much joy to finally have an articulated version of the old Playmates Shredder as a kid. So frustrating, right? But I think Super 7 did a fantastic job bringing this guy back to life. Now with Wave 1, we had Raphael, and now we got the leader, Leonardo. And it's funny going through life now, and Michelangelo was my favorite now at this point in life. Leonardo is my favorite now. Yeah, I go through all the different turtles, but uh, you get all the different blades and weapons. Same old, same old. You get a ton of extra hands. You get like 45 extra hands, and he's got really weird green fingernails. Not a fan of that, to be honest. It's very striking, so you notice it. It's like the first thing when I pull, I'm like, why does he have green fingernails? And every single instance of a hand that has fingernails, yeah, they're painted that ooze green. And you got two different versions of the shell cell, right? Open and closed. The pizza, it kind of looks like a moldy piece of pizza. Like the one that came with Raphael was very glossy, looked cheesy and oily and everything else. This has been sitting out in the sewer for a couple days. And then you got the IDW alternate head for Leonardo. Very well done. I actually really like that look. I like the grit and teeth. This is fun. Even though I like the old version, the Playmates one, this one's cool. You get the weapons tree, which, you know, it's yay. <laughs> and Leonardo himself, which, again, bringing back all the fun, all the nostalgia. Very well done. Nice swords, nice painted swords. The belts, the face, the one mouth is uh, open on the side, you know what I mean? The blues, the back. I really like that they painted the rivets of his belt silver. And the belt is pretty much the exact same as I always remember it. Now, I do know that the first release versions of these Leonardos had a silver belt, as is evidence of the promo photo. But because I just recently got this Leonardo, so it's like a reissue, uh, they've left the silver off, which I definitely appreciate. Now, this Leonardo has some paint issues where it's like paint splatter. And on the other head, it had a little bit, I was able to kind of, you know, scratch it off. This, I can't get it off. So it's, and of course, it's right there on the face, but it's just a bummer, right, if anything. And then just like the first wave with the uh, the loose legs, Shredder really didn't have this. Leonardo does suffer from it. The It's just looser than I would appreciate. Although the knees are solid, the feet are solid, everything is solid joints-wise. But uh, yeah, the legs are still loose on these turtles. But I love that you can put the katanas right in the back. You got awesome weapon storage, just like the old Ninja Turtles figures. And it does look great. You can't pull the belt off. It's not like the old ones where you can kind of swap the belts or not do crisscross. You can do like suspender style, whichever. And I really do like the alternate head portrait for this guy. I think it works really nice. That coupled with the huge katana blades that really fits with the turtle itself. I'll, I'll talk about more of the weapons uh, size-wise when it comes to Bebop. Stay tuned for that. But uh, with Raphael and now Leonardo, wave one, wave two, 
yeah, we're slowly building our Ninja Turtle, the core for Ninja Turtle collection. And I love that you can just have these two going at each other, right? That is very cool to see. Well done for Leonardo. Which finally brings us to my favorite figure of this particular wave, Bebop. This is a spectacular figure. He does have certain things where I'm like, ah, come on, what happened there? But... I mean, overall, he's pretty solid, right? So you get the old-fashioned weapons. You got the trash can lid. It's painted. You see the rivets are painted. It's pretty much like a solid color, right? So it, when you when you see the weapons tree, you're like, well, there's not much difference, right? But the, uh, the weapons themselves, they have a little bit more paint, the knife, the drill gun. And here's the thing, you know, when I, I'll see in just a second, I have him holding the weapons. They're too tiny. And something I would have appreciated is maybe go to town with the weapons, you know, kind of uh, expand upon them instead of just kind of doing the exact, exact same. Maybe put like a trigger, something like that. You know what I mean? Because he does come with two extra fisted hands, this little paint right there. It, it you know, brings it out. It's nicely sculpted hands. And then you got this extra head portrait where, I mean, it's pretty much the same portrait. It's just a difference of paint here and there. You got his ponytail. But I noticed that, let's say, the little ponytail twisty tire here, there's no paint on that, and I feel like that really could have benefited, just to kind of add to it, because you dry brush some pink at the top of the purple hair, you were there, you could have just uh, done it, right? But uh, it's different enough, it's more of the classic Playmates type head. You got the weapons tree, which, as I said, it's basically the same kind of weapon, so pointless, really. But yeah, Bebop himself, as I'll say again, just in terms of the figure, if you didn't put any weapons or anything with I mean, he's thoroughly impressive. I mean, he's a hefty, heavy figure, uh, first and foremost. He's one of the, the bigger figures that we've gotten so far, if you don't extend Baxter's legs. You can see the difference of the head portrait. More pink. I, I go back and forth. I kind of like the more pinky one, and then, you know, I think. But he's got all the, the, the 80s paraphernalia, right? I do wish that the chains were real on the belt. That would have been kind of cool. The stitches... Some are painted, and then if you go inside, like, the seam of his leg, those are not painted. So they kind of, like, they go back and forth, which, again, those are the nitpicks I'm having. But those are things where I feel like a little bit more paint for the price, right? I like his uh, Converse shoes that he's got going on. Those are solid. The bottom are very cool. I actually like the treads on that. He's got peg holes. In terms of the articulation, single joints all the way around, again... Certain things that I'm just kind of nitpicking, but I like that you see the turtle shell, right? Sculpted in the nines, and on this side, one of them is missing the foot. So I kind of like that they kind of did that. Not everything is symmetrically perfect, but uh, the pink in the face, the tusks, the nose ring, the glasses, I mean, it's pretty well done. And I love the back of his jacket. That, in the original Bebop figure, that was always one of my favorite aspects. I don't know why. I just like the patch nature of it he's got a little pigtail and then you have this brace on his knee right so go very easy right it moves with you so it articulates at the brace when you move the knee still has some of that goo right there inside the joints but uh, yeah just go very easy on the knees that's uh, really the only problem i think articulation wise the legs are pretty solid nothing's loose he stands pretty dang good no ab crunch nothing like that it spins at the waist but uh, like i said yeah overall very happy, careful to tail, don't want to break anything off. It's actually a very pointy tail in the sculpt. But once you get all the weapons going, I'll tell you this, you're going to have to heat the hands up for the weapons. Uh, maybe not so much the gun, but definitely if he's trying to hold, let's say, the uh, cover. Uh, maybe even some instances of the knife, just FYI, you might want to heat those up. Because they're incredibly tough to finagle. But from all aspects, all points, it's a pretty solid bebop figure. And one thing I like to point out is that uh, yeah, you're getting a lot of plastic when you get the Bebop figure. He is a ginormous figure compared to all the other Super 7 Ultimates. Like I said, very heavy. So he dwarfs Shredder, and then I like that Leonardo, of course, smaller than Shredder, who is then smaller than Bebop. So the scalature that they got going on for the Super 7 Ultimates wave, I like that. Changes it up from the old Playmates figures. And speaking of which, here's all the Super 7 figures pre-posed, right? Just bear with me. I'm trying to do this. Uh, just go with it. But, you know, to see them mixed with the Playmates figures, you get the idea. They were all just the same sort of height for the most part. But uh, again, I like that they've changed the scale for these guys. And of course, especially with Shredder, given a lot more articulation. But I will tell you this. I think 
before collecting these Super 7 Ultimates, I think you should go more for the old Playmates. Get to know them if you've never collected them, because they are quite a joy to have. You gotta have these. I'm making a recommendation to get the new Super 7 ones, right? But uh, so far, we've gotten eight figures out of Wave 1 and Wave 2, and they're all pretty solid. There's some paint problems here and there. There's some loose joints here and there, right? It just depends on the figure. But for the most part, if you aren't collecting anything, if you are only going for these, it's pretty, it's a pretty solid set of uh, toys. I got to give it to them on that. I know a lot of people are not very happy with the price points these days, right? Trust me, I'm in that boat. But uh, if you're only collecting one wave, it's the problem is when you collect too many, right? And I definitely know that situation. But uh, if you're only collecting Super 7, it's not bad for every, what, 6 to 12 months, depending on when they ship. These are no different. They're a pretty solid set of figures. So, that's really going to wrap it up for my look at the Wave 2 of Super 7's TMNT Ultimates. And again, please do check out Entertainment Earth for all your pre-order needs, or maybe you missed something, yada yada. You know the drill right now. But as always, I'm curious to know what you guys think about these Super 7 TMNT Ultimates figures. Are they for you? Have you been collecting them? I know I'm behind, right? We've still got three and four to talk about. Those are coming soon. I'm taking my time on these. But I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, again, as I'll reiterate, get the old Playmates one. Have fun, at least with the core, right? The very first wave. And then go from there. Check out the uh, Super 7 Ultimates. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios. Adios.